This video is about process flowcharts. Quality improvement focuses on improving processes and outcomes. Through changing processes, we aim to make systems work better and ultimately to improve outcomes. An important improvement tool is a flowchart, also called a flow diagram or flow map. It is essentially a picture that shows all key steps of a process in sequential order. Why should we map our process and create a flowchart? Drawing a flowchart helps us define and standardize key steps of a process. It allows us to have a deeper understanding of a process and analyze the sequence of steps or actions that go into it. We are then able to more easily and correct identify problems in the flow of healthcare from the patient's perspective. Mapping the flow of our work helps us highlight waste and allows us to understand where inefficiencies lie. This then leads us to the critical step of generating and putting in place solutions to improve and streamline work processes, which ultimately lead to improvements in outcomes. Flowcharts are also a great communication tool to help improvement teams develop a shared understanding of how a process is performed. Drawing a flowchart requires some basic materials, some note cards or sticky notes, a large piece of paper and some marking pens. Later on in this video, we will go over an example of a flowchart of a typical patient's visit to a clinic. But first, here is a five-step process for drawing a flowchart. Step 1. Define the process to be mapped. Write its title at the top of the large paper. Step 2. Brainstorm the activities that take place in the process. Sequence is not important at this point, although thinking in sequence may help people remember all the steps. Decide on the boundaries of your process. Where or when does the process start? Where or when does it end? What level of detail should your flowchart include? Do you want this to be a high-level flowchart or do you want to get more granular? Step 3 is to define as many key activities as you can in the process. Write down each activity on a card or a sticky note. When all activities are included, in step 4, arrange the sticky notes in sequence and draw arrows to show the flow of the process. Step 5. Review the flowchart with others involved in the process, such as frontline clinicians, supervisors and patients, to see if they agree that the process is drawn accurately. Edit the flowchart if needed. Now that we have looked at the five key steps in drawing a flowchart, let us move on to some common symbols used in drawing these charts. Whether you choose to use these symbols or not is up to you and your improvement team. A rectangle shows one step in the process. The step is written inside the box. Usually, only one arrow leads out of the box. An arrow shows the direction of flow from one step or decision to another. A diamond denotes decision points between two or more parts in your flowchart. The question is usually written in the diamond. More than one arrow leads out of the diamond. Each arrow shows the direction the process takes for a given answer to the question. Often the answers are yes and no, or true and false. This symbol that resembles the letter D signifies a delay or waiting period when no activity is performed. A circle is a connector or link to another page or another flowchart. The same symbol on the other page or other flowchart indicates that the flow continues there. A parallelogram shows inputs or outputs or receiving or sending any type of data. Examples are receiving a lab report, sending an order for a prescription medication to the pharmacy or sending an email to a patient. A document is represented as a rectangle with a wavy base. Start and end symbols are represented as ovals or rounded rectangles, usually containing the words start or end. Here are some tips for drawing process flowcharts. Don't worry too much about drawing your flowchart the right way or the wrong way. The right way is a way that helps people who are involved understand the process. 
make sure to identify all key people involved with the process and engage them in creating the flowchart. This includes those who work in the process or are affected by it, such as clinicians, supervisors, and patients. Involve them by interviewing them before the session, drawing the flowchart with them, or by showing them the developing flowchart between work sessions and obtaining their feedback. Drawing a flowchart needs to be a hands-on process by frontline stakeholders. Do not assign a technical expert to draw the flowchart. People who actually perform the process should do it. Sometimes it is best to start with a paper, pen and sticky notes. Computer software is available for drawing flowcharts and is quite handy for drawing a neat final diagram. But for the messy initial stages of creating your flowchart, using pen and paper is just fine. Now let us look at an example of a process flowchart that was drawn as part of an effort to improve process turnaround time at a pediatric outpatient clinic. A high level map of a typical patient's clinic visit is drawn here. We decided to color code our steps by whether they involved the front office, the nurse or the physician. Our process starts by the patient checking in at the front desk. At the front desk, the clerk enters the patient's information into the electronic medical record or EMR system. The nurse notes from the EMR that the patient has checked in, gets the patient and her mother from the waiting room, and takes them to the vital signs station. There the nurse records the patient's vital signs and then walks with the family to the examination room. Next, the medical trainee or resident sees in the EMR that the patient is now in the exam room. She reviews the patient's chart, enters the exam room and sees the patient. The resident then exits the exam room to consult with the attending physician. Next, the attending physician enters the exam room with the resident, confirms key aspects of the history and exam as per supervision requirements, and then exits the room. The resident completes the visit, prints out the visit summary from the computer in the exam room, walks to the printer at the nurse's station, picks up the printout, comes back to the exam room, and gives the printed summary to the patient's mother. The patient and her mother then leave the room and go to the checkout desk. The clerk helps them schedule their next appointment if one is needed. The child and her mother then leave the clinic. This is the end of our process. An important value of the flowchart is in identifying areas for improvement. Is the process standardized or are people doing the same work in different ways? Are steps repeated or out of sequence? Are there steps that do not add value to the outcome? Are there steps where errors or delays occurs frequently? The total time for a typical visit in this clinic is 120 minutes or two hours on average, including time spent in waiting. Drawing the process map helped the clinic staff understand that much of this time did not add value to the patient and her family. Time spent in waiting was essentially waste. Motion related to walking between the waiting room, vital signs station and exam room was waste. And this information was obtained just from a high level process map. We can get even more granular if we like by mapping out steps in greater detail and adding in time spent at and between each step. The clinic staff identified steps in the process which they felt could be improved first. Perhaps the vital signs could be measured in the exam room instead of at a separate vital station. The resident could review the patient's chart in advance of the visit, reducing some waiting time and delay. Printers could be located closer to or in the exam room, or the information could be sent electronically to the patient if the EMR allows for it and the family elects this method of receiving the visit summary. Remember that quality improvement is a process, not an event. A process flowchart helps a team map out steps and activities and identify those that result in waste and do not add value to patients.